here and it's bigger than ever. Rundown 5 has finally been released. I'm not really sure how I'm going to be editing this. Hey guys, Future Traveler here. Just got done editing the video and this video is packed. So on the screen right now are going to be timestamps for just everything that you might want to watch. Uh, so you can skip around the video and ignore the things that you don't really care too much about. All these timestamps will be clickable in the description. Also, quick disclaimer, there are subtle spoilers if you haven't played the rundown yet, but all major spoilers do have a warning before them. So yeah, enjoy the video. I think because there is so much change, to keep things simple, we're just going to go down the patch notes for now. Kicking things off, they added Warden artifacts and boosters. Let's start with boosters. These are temporary upgrades that allow you to add a little bit of support during this rundown. I feel like this would have been a controversial idea by adding in perks, but they seem to have pulled it off nicely. These perks aren't too overpowered and have limited uses to balance it out. The artifacts are little cubes that you can look for that are normally placed on the ground or shelves that allow you to unlock boosters by picking them up. It's a little unclear at the moment, but if you pick up 10 of a specific artifact in a level, your whole team gets a new booster of that type. There are three types of artifacts and boosters. There is muted, bold, and aggressive. Muted are a dark orange in your commons. They spawn almost everywhere, and you can find yourself getting a lot in one spot. Bold are blue, and they are your uncommons. Aggressive are red, and they are your rares. The tiers don't change how hard they are to spot, just how many of them are in a level or room. Also, I just want to mention, this may have been a coincidence, but when I killed the scout, there was an aggressive artifact on its body. An important thing that we found out is that this feature's progress is transferred between levels. As long as you don't make a new lobby, you can transfer your progress to new boosters between levels and after death. If this doesn't make any sense, that's okay, it will soon. One last thing about the artifacts, I know this section is very long, is that each level has heat. This is a measurement of how many artifacts are in a level. When you exit a level by dying or winning, this percentage will go down, showing how many you've collected and how many you missed. Don't worry, this number will go back up. Play a different level a few times and it'll begin to respawn in the previous level. The new environment for this rundown is called the floodways. A floodway is a channel that diverts water during a flood, so find this area to be damped, lined with moss, and have a less normal structure. When they mentioned more vertical playability, they definitely meant it. And now I fully believe that that area in the screenshot is now accessible. Moving on to new dangers, I always loved how 10 Chambers labeled it as new dangers rather than new enemies. I'm going to go ahead and say a spoiler warning here because this is a pretty big gameplay feature and it is pretty easy to discover on your own. But for those of you who want to hear me, here it is. If you hop into the first level, A1, you'll be greeted with giant hanging sacks from the ceiling. This might alarm you, but for now, they are harmless. Long story short, when you leave the room and come back after a little while, the enemies of that room will have respawned or rebirth underneath where those sacks were. So if you walk into a room that has a lot of those sacks, be prepared for later if you know you need to return to that zone. Also, if you need to return multiple times, deal with the enemies each time. Don't leave any enemies in there, because I'm not 100% sure but I'm pretty sure they can keep spawning and having to deal with three times the enemies in the same room is not a good sign for a good run. The flashlight indicator is what that little sun icon was below your tools. I do want to thank Blex for pointing this out in the previous video, as thinking about it now, it does make a lot more sense. This basically turns on when you have your flashlight on, because in some areas when it's foggy, it's a little hard to tell. This also helps for bugs like the host in game, thinking that player 2's flashlight is on, but player 2 can't see it. Next up we have terminals. They finally added some changes to terminals. Two great things that they added were they expanded the autocomplete to possible keywords instead of just commands. You can do this in terminals by pressing tab. And they also changed the ping command a little bit. The ping command will now have a distance based feature. And if you add hyphen T, which is the hyphen is a little like minus sign. It's on the screen, you know. If you add hyphen T to your command, the ping will continue going until someone picks it up or until you leave the terminal area. They added an intel button to the rundown screen to give you some hints and information about the new rundown. Some of the things that they mention is the artifacts and just basic lore guides. 
Right here, they have some of the GUI settings that they added. They added a primary display setting and video settings, button to reset gameplay and HUD settings to their defaults, ability to enable or disable and scale user interface components, option to enable or disable hit and death indicators, add stand on jump toggle to gameplay settings. So on the screen right now, these are the bug fixes. I'm just gonna read the ones that I find really important. If you wanna read them all, pause the video or go to the GTFO Discord and go to the channel patch notes. So here we go. Laptop terminals can now be pinged as well. Flashlight no longer turns off when placing a sentry or switching out consumables. Bio tracker can no longer be given tool refills. Big one. Bio tracker tags will no longer stay on the screen when they should be removed, like the ghost tags. Normalized S1 scan speeds for one to three players, so it won't take like an actual eternity to do those when you're playing solo or just last with four people. Matchmaking settings now save on disk. If you change computers, they will be reset. Lockers can now instantly open when completing a hacking minigame. There's no delay. Seafoam will no longer pass through doors. Seafoam trip mine now explodes instantly to trap things running through it. Sentries now aim for body if head is destroyed. Fixed shooters not being able to hit you if you looked up or down. And fixed mine damage in crowded areas. Basically what this last one meant is the mines weren't doing the proper amount of damage if there are a lot of enemies behind like a blood door or something they now fixed it so that it actually does proper damage to all of them getting into the weapon changes we see that they have removed the hell revolver love that gun auto pistol carbine unsurprising heavy assault rifle choke my shotgun machine gun techman veruda 12 and the burst cannon with these being gone in order to fill the gaps they have re-added the machine pistol from rundown 2 the burst rifle from rundown 2 the Hell Gun from Rundown 3, the Hell Rifle from Rundown 3, and the Machine Gun TM Arbalist 5 from Rundown 1. They also added two new guns specifically for Rundown 5. These guns are Heavy SMG and the Double Tap Rifle. This is the gun that we saw in the leaked video last time. With some new weapons comes with new weapon balancing. To start, the normal pistol now staggers enemies a bit more each hit. The machine pistol has decreased magazine size, increased hipfire accuracy, and increased body shot damage. The DMR still has a nasty S scope, but it also has increased body shot damage, increased fire rate, and increased hip fire accuracy. The burst rifle from Rundown 2 has an increased clip size now. The normal shotgun has more ammo, better range effectiveness, and now one shots chargers, which is epic. The combat shotgun is still here and is now going on three rundowns straight. I kind of feel like they ruined it with Rundown 4, but now they've brought it back by increasing its staggering effect and body shot damage on sleepers. I really love this thing. The revolver has slightly reduced ammo capacity. The sniper rifle has an increased clip size, which is something that one of my friends Tony was complaining about a lot previously, so that's good. Uh, the sniper has an increased clip size. Let's go! <laughs> Let's fucking go! <laughs> Let's fucking go! Alongside the increased clip, it also has increased ammo capacity and better hip fire. But now they have also increased the delay between shots. The hell gun went through a lot of changes where it now has a slightly shorter charge up time. They increased its ammo capacity, over penetration, and body shot damage. They also gave it better hip fire. Seeing a pattern? The Hell Rifle also went through a lot of changes with its faster reload time, increased general damage, increased body shot damage, increased clip size, increased over penetration, and increased ammo capacity. It also has better hip fire now. The Machine Gun Arbalist 5 now has an increased rate of fire. Sadly, they reduced the mine deployer's maximum capacity from 10 to 8 mines. A moment of silence for all mine deployer mains. <laughs> Literally me. <laughs> to wrap things up, 10 chambers polish up the user interface a little bit. They say they added a hover effect when the mouse cursor is over a weapon or booster slot. Menu bar selection will now light up. Improve the weapon selection UI. Renamed exit lobby to exit expedition. And return to lobby to retire to lobby in the menu bar. I think it's still a little bit more confusing. You gotta make sure you click the right one. Read it before you click on it. Renamed objectives page to objectives and boosters. Increase blood on screen when player is down. So that's it. That's the end of the video and most of the changes for this rundown. I'm sure we're going to be able to see more things in the future of this rundown, kind of like the extension of rundown 4, and I'm super excited to start exploring. If you want to see me and my friends try our best and fail miserably, consider following me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash poofily. Still have a name change, which is why it's not Traveler, but it's me, don't worry. In a few days, I will be releasing uh, me and my friends' first look of rundown 5, where we try out uh, A1, A2, B1, and B2, I believe, if you're curious to see how we react to everything. That's also where you might be able to further understand artifacts a little bit more. Anyways, for the one viewer who's still here, thank you. I really appreciate it. And to anyone who watched my previous video, I thank you dearly. It did way better than I was expecting, and I really do appreciate every one of you. Here's to a new rundown. Wrapping up a little bit, they added an Intel button to the rundown screen to give you...
<laughs> what the fuck? That's all GTF open. Fuck, I closed it. They added an Intel button to the rundown screen. Fuck. The rundown screen. <laughs> the machine gun Arbalist 5 now has an increased rate of fire. Afraid of fire. Oh. Opening it on it. Guys, oh, it's a nut sack! <laughs> Wait, don't, don't touch the testicle. I'm looking at the Batmobile. Oh, I didn't mean to get all in the ladder. Hey, close the door open. Okay, I gotta go do whatever my mom said that I need to do. One second. Okay. Yo, D Freddy, you wanna come check out the Batmobile? Yo, yeah, sure. Bro! Look, it's the fucking Batmobile! Hmm. Uh, I feel so left out. It looks like an shiny. APC. It's kind of cool. Right. Dude, there's like trees and shit. How close to the surface are we? Uh, I think we're pretty close. It said it was 545 meters. Seriously, that video has like 1.2k views and gained like 200 today. <laughs> what the heck, guys? Thanks. <laughs> also, who's the one guy that like posted like my link in their discord i don't know anyone who posted the links in the discord and like 22 percent of the audience came from discord it's like what